Welcome to ABC Tutorial. Today we are going to talk about cells. Cells are the basic living, structural and functional units of the body. The average human adult have about 100 trillion cells. The cell is made up of three main parts, the plasma membrane, the cytoplasm and the nucleus. The plasma membrane is a flexible barrier that separates the cell from the external environment. It is made up of phospholipids, cholesterol and glycolipids. The lipids in the plasma membrane are arranged in a bilayer arrangement or two halves, namely the external and the internal lipid layer. The bilayer arrangement occurs because the lipids are amphipathic, that is, they have both polar and non-polar parts. Proteins are also found in the plasma membrane and they are regarded to as membrane proteins. The plasma membrane is not a rigid structure, but it is rather flexible. It is a fluid structure because many of the components of the plasma membranes are free to move sideways in their own half of the lipid bilayer. Membrane proteins can either be integral proteins or peripheral proteins. Integral proteins extend into or through the lipid bilayer and are firmly embedded in it. Most of them are transmembrane proteins that is they span the entire lipid bilayer and protrude into the cytosol and the extracellular fluid. The peripheral proteins are not firmly embedded in the membrane but are attached to the polar ends of the membrane lipids at the inner or outer surface of the membrane. Membrane proteins can act as ion channels, carrier proteins called transporters. They can also act as receptors. They can act as enzymes. They can also act as a linker which anchors filaments inside and outside the plasma membrane. They can also act as a cell identity marker which distinguishes one cell from the other. Transport of materials across the plasma membrane is essential to the life of a cell. Certain substances move into the cell to support metabolic reactions, and other substances produced by the, cells, by the cells must be exported to their destination. Some cellular waste products which are toxic to the cell must also move out of the cell. Substances generally move across the cell membrane via transport processes that can be classified as active or passive transport process, depending on whether they require cellular energy or not. Passive processes do not involve the use of cellular energy, while in active transport processes, cellular energy is used to drive the substance against a concentration gradient or electrical gradient. An example of passive transport process is simple diffusion. Simple diffusion is a passive process in which substance move freely through the lipid bilayer of the cell without the help of membrane transport proteins. Examples of molecules that travel using simple diffusion include oxygen, carbon dioxide, nitrogen gas, fatty acids, steroids, fat-soluble vitamins, small uncharged molecules such as water, urea, also travel through the lipid bilayer using simple diffusion. Another example of passive transport is facilitated diffusion. Facilitated diffusion occurs when an integral membrane protein assists in the transportation of a substance across the membrane along its concentration gradient, that is, in facilitated diffusion, a membrane protein is involved, however, cellular energy is not consumed. Facilitated diffusion can be channel-mediated facilitated diffusion, in which the assisting membrane protein is an ion channel, or it can also be a carrier-mediated facilitated diffusion, in which the assisting membrane protein is a carrier protein, also called a transporter. Potassium moves into the cell using channel-mediated facilitated diffusion, while glucose and fructose enters the cell by carrier-mediated facilitated diffusion. Osmosis is a type of diffusion in which there is net movement of a solvent through a selectively permeable membrane. Like other types of diffusion, osmosis is a passive process. The solvent is usually water, which moves by osmosis across plasma membrane from an area of high water concentration to an area of low water concentration. During osmosis, water molecules pass through the plasma membrane either by moving between neighboring phospholipid molecules or by moving through specific channels, referred to as aquaporins. Active transport is considered to be an active process because energy is required for carrier proteins to move solids across the membrane against a concentration gradient. In primary active transport, a carrier protein transports a substance across the plasma membrane against its concentration gradient. These carrier proteins are referred to as pumps. Example is the sodium potassium pump, which transports sodium ion outside of the cells and brings potassium ion inside the cell. In secondary active transport, 
a carrier protein simultaneously binds to two substances and transports them at the same time across the membrane. If these transports move the two substances in the same direction, they are called sympotas. While if it moves the two substances in opposite direction, it is called antipotas. During endocytosis, materials move into the cell within a vesicle that is formed from the plasma membrane. While in exocytosis, materials move out of a cell by diffusion with the plasma membrane of vesicles formed within the cell. Active transport in vesicles can also be used to successfully move a substance into, across, and out of the cell. This active process is referred to as transcytosis, that is, vesicle undergo endocytosis on one side of the cell, moves across the cell, and undergo exocytosis on the opposite side of the cell. The cytoplasm consists of all cellular content between the plasma membrane and the nucleus. It consists of the cytosol, the cytoskeleton, and the organelles. The cytosol, also called the intracellular fluid, is the fluid portion of the cytoplasm. It surrounds the organelles and it constitutes about 55% of the total cell volume. It consists of water and dissolved substances, which includes enzymes that catalyze important chemical reactions in the body. Organelles are specialized structures within the cell that have characteristic shapes and perform specific functions. The number and type of organelles vary in different cells depending on the functions of the cells. Liver cells contain many smooth endoplasmic reticulum that helps in detoxification of toxic substances. Muscle cells contain a lot of mitochondria that supplies energy during muscular contraction. Centrosomes, also called microtubule organizing center, is located near the nucleus and it consists of a pair of centrioles and a pericentriolar matrix. The centrosomes forms the mitotic spindle that helps the cell to separate during cell division and it also builds microtubules in non-dividing cells which helps the cellular movement and transportation. The cilia and flagella are multi-projections from the cell surface. The cilia are usually numerous, short, while the flagellum is usually single and longer. Both structures contain microtubules which are attached to a basal body. The cilia moves fluid along the cell surface while the flagellum usually moves an entire cell. The ribosomes are tiny structures within the cell that are at the site of protein synthesis. They are rich in ribosomal ribonucleic acids and contains at least 50 different types of proteins. They are made up of large and small subunits. Some ribosomes exist as free ribosomes in the cytosol, while some are attached to the rough endoplasmic reticulum and some are also attached to the outer nuclear membrane. Free ribosomes synthesize cytosolic proteins, while rough endoplasmic reticulum ribosomes synthesize proteins that are destined for cell membranes exports and other organelles. The endoplasmic reticulum is a network of membranes in the form of flattened cell. There are two types of endoplasmic reticulum, the rough and the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. The rough endoplasmic reticulum is continuous with the nuclear membrane and it is studded with ribosomes. The rough endoplasmic reticulum is the site of protein synthesis. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum does not have ribosomes on its outside surfaces. However, it contains unique enzymes that make it functionally more diverse than the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Functions of the smooth endoplasmic reticulum include fatty acid synthesis, steroid synthesis, detoxification of drugs, storage and release of calcium ions that helps with muscle contractions. Most of the proteins synthesized by the ribosomes are ultimately transported to the other regions of the cell. The first step is to transport them through an organelle called the Gogai complex. The Gogai apparatus has two surfaces. The entry surface, also referred to as the cyst surface. This is the part that faces the endoplasmic reticulum. While the exit phase is also called the trans phase and it lies adjacent to the plasma membrane. The sacs in between the entry and the exit phases are referred to as the medial cystans. The Gogai apparatus modifies, sorts, package and transport proteins that are received from the rough endoplasmic reticulum. The Gaga apparatus also forms secretory vesicles that discharge processed proteins via exocytosis into the extracellular fluid and to other organelles. Lysosomes are membrane enclosed vesicles that are formed from the Gaga complex. It contains powerful digestive and hydrolytic enzymes and it helps in recycling worn out organelles. It is involved in autophagy which is the process by which one out organelles are digested. Lysosomes are also involved in autolysis, in which the entire cell is destroyed. Peroxisosomes are another group of organelles that are similar in structure to lysosomes, 
but are smaller than lysosomes. Peroxisosomes are also called microbodies and they contain several oxidases. It helps in detoxification of toxic substances. Peroxisosomes are particularly abundant in the liver cells. Proteasomes are small organelles that help in degradation of cytosolic proteins after being conjugated with ubiquitin. The mitochondria is also regarded to as the powerhouse of the cell because it generates most of the ATP through aerobic respiration. Cells may have as few as 100 or as many as several thousands of mitochondria depending on their activity. Cells of certain organs such as those of the muscles, livers and kidneys have large numbers of mitochondria. A mitochondrion consists of an external and internal mitochondrial membrane with a fluid free space between them. Mitochondria also play an important role in apoptosis. The nucleus is a spherical structure that usually is the most prominent feature of a cell. Most cells have a single nucleus, although some, such as the mature red blood cell, usually have none. In contrast, skeletal muscle cells and a few other types of cells may have multiple nuclei. The nucleus contains genetic materials and it directs the activities of the cell. It also dictates the type of proteins and structures that are produced by a particular cell. It is the site of ribosome production and it also is in cell division.